The language of mathematics has a vast vocabulary of specialist and technical terms. It also has a certain amount of jargon, commonly used phrases which are part of the culture of mathematics, rather than of the subject. Jargon often appears in lectures, and sometimes in print, as informal shorthand for rigorous arguments or precise ideas. Much of this is common English, but with a specific non-obvious meaning when used in a mathematical sense. Some phrases, like, in general, appear below in more than one section. Philosophy of mathematics Abstract nonsense Also general abstract nonsense or generalized abstract nonsense, a tongue-in-cheek reference to category theory, using which one can employ arguments that establish a possibly concrete result without reference to any specifics of the present problem. The paper of Eilenberg and Mac Lane 1942 introduced the very abstract idea of a category, a subject then called general abstract nonsense. Grothendieck raised algebraic geometry to a new level of abstraction. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot dot dot. If certain mathematicians could console themselves for a time with the hope that all these complicated structures were abstract nonsense. Dot the later papers of Grothendieck and others showed that classical problems which had resisted efforts of several generations of talented mathematicians, could be solved in terms of complicated concepts canonical a reference to a standard or choice-free presentation of some mathematical object. The term canonical is also used more informally, meaning roughly standard or classic. For example, one might say that Euclid's proof is the «canonical proof» of the infinitude of primes. There are two canonical proofs that are always used to show non-mathematicians what a mathematical proof is like Deep A result is called «deep» if its proof requires concepts and methods that are advanced beyond the concepts needed to formulate the result. The prime number theorem, proved with techniques from complex analysis, was thought to be a deep result until elementary proofs were found. The fact that π is irrational is a deep result because it requires considerable development of real analysis to prove, even though it can be stated in terms of simple number theory and geometry. Elegant also beautiful, an aesthetic term referring to the ability of an idea to provide insight into mathematics, whether by unifying disparate fields, introducing a new perspective on a single field, or providing a technique of proof which is either particularly simple, or captures the intuition or imagination as to why the result it proves is true. Giancarlo Rota distinguished between elegance of presentation and beauty of concept, saying that for example, some topics could be written about elegantly although the mathematical content is not beautiful, and some theorems or proofs are beautiful but may be written about inelegantly. The beauty of a mathematical theory is independent of the aesthetic qualities. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 of the theory's rigorous expositions. Some beautiful theories may never be given a presentation which matches their beauty. Instances can also be found of mediocre theories of questionable beauty which are given brilliant, exciting expositions. Category theory is rich in beautiful and insightful definitions and poor in elegant proofs. The theorems remain clumsy and dull. Expositions of projective geometry vied for one another in elegance of presentation and in cleverness of proof. In retrospect, one wonders what all the fuss was about. Mathematicians may say that a theorem is beautiful when they really mean to say that it is enlightening. 
We acknowledge a theorem's beauty when we see how the theorem fits in its place. We say that a proof is beautiful when such a proof finally gives away the secret of the theorem. Elementary A proof or result is called elementary if it requires only basic concepts and methods, in contrast to so called deep results. The concept of elementary proof is used specifically in number theory, where it usually refers to a proof that does not use methods from complex analysis. Folklore A result is called folklore if it is non-obvious, has not been published, and yet is generally known among the specialists in a field. Usually, it is unknown who first obtained the result. If the result is important, it may eventually find its way into the textbooks, whereupon it ceases to be folklore. Many of the results mentioned in this paper should be considered folklore, in that they merely formally state ideas that are well known to researchers in the area, but may not be obvious to beginners and to the best of my knowledge do not appear elsewhere in print. Natural Similar to canonical. But more specific, this term makes reference to a description almost exclusively in the context of transformations which holds independently of any choices. Though long used informally, this term has found a formal definition in category theory. Pathological an object behaves pathologically or, somewhat more broadly used, in a degenerated way if it fails to conform to the generic behavior of such objects, fails to satisfy certain regularity properties depending on context, or simply disobeys mathematical intuition. These can be and often are contradictory requirements. Sometimes the term is more pointed, referring to an object which is specifically and artificially exhibited as a counterexample to these properties. Since half a century, we have seen arise a crowd of bizarre functions which seem to try to resemble as little as possible the honest functions which serve some purpose. Nay more, from the logical point of view, it is these strange functions which are the most general less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 today they are invented expressly to put at fault the reasonings of our fathers. The Dirichlet function took on an enormous importance less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as giving an incentive for the creation of new types of function whose properties departed completely from what intuitively seemed admissible a celebrated example of such a so-called pathological function less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as the one provided by Weierstrass this function is continuous but not differentiable. Note for that latter quote that as the differentiable functions are meager in the space of continuous functions, as Banach found out in 1931, differentiable functions are colloquially speaking a rare exception among the continuous ones. Thus it can hardly be defended any more to call non-differentiable continuous functions pathological. Rigor, rigor Mathematics strives to establish its results using indisputable logic rather than informal descriptive argument. Rigor is the use of such logic in a proof. Well behaved An object is well behaved in contrast with being pathological if it does satisfy the prevailing regularity properties, or sometimes if it conforms to intuition but intuition often suggests the opposite behavior as well. Similar to smooth see below. Topic: <laughs> Descriptive informalities. Although ultimately every mathematical argument must meet a high standard of precision, mathematicians use descriptive but informal statements to discuss recurring themes or concepts with unwieldy formal statements. 
Note that many of the terms are completely rigorous in context. Almost all. A shorthand term for all except for a set of measure zero, when there is a measure to speak of. For example, almost all real numbers are transcendental, because the algebraic real numbers form a countable subset of the real numbers with measure zero. One can also speak of almost all integers having a property to mean all except finitely many despite the integers not admitting a measure for which this agrees with the previous usage for example almost all prime numbers are odd there is a more complicated meaning for integers as well discussed in the main article finally this term is sometimes used synonymously with generic below arbitrarily large notions which arise mostly in the context of limits, referring to the recurrence of a phenomenon as the limit is approached. A statement such as that predicate P is satisfied by arbitrarily large values, can be expressed in more formal notation by X, Y X, P Y. See also frequently. The statement that quantity F X depending on X can be made arbitrarily large corresponds to y x f x y arbitrary a shorthand for the universal quantifier an arbitrary choice is one which is made unrestrictedly or alternatively a statement holds of an arbitrary element of a set if it holds of any element of that set also much in general language use among mathematicians of course, this problem can be arbitrarily complicated. Eventually, in the context of limits, this is shorthand meaning for sufficiently large arguments, the relevant arguments are implicit in the context. As an example, the function log, log x eventually becomes larger than 100. In this context, eventually means for sufficiently large x factor through a term in category theory referring to composition of morphisms. If we have three objects A, B, and C and a map F A C displaystyle F colon A to C which is written as a composition F equals H G display style F equals H circ G with G a B display style G colon a to B and H B C display style H colon B to C then f is said to factor through any and all of b display style b g display style g and h display style h finite next to the usual meaning of not infinite in another more restrictive meaning that one may encounter a value being said to be Finite also excludes infinitesimal values and the value zero. For example, if the variance of a random variable is said to be finite, this implies it is a positive real number. Frequently, in the context of limits, this is shorthand for arbitrarily large arguments and its relatives, as with eventually, the intended variant is implicit. As an example, the sequence Minus one n display style minus one caret n is frequently in the interval one half three halves because there are arbitrarily large n for which the value of the sequence is in the interval dot generic. This term has similar connotations as almost all, but is used particularly for concepts outside the purview of measure theory. A property holds generically 
on a set if the set satisfies some context dependent notion of density or perhaps if its complement satisfies some context dependent notion of smallness for example a property which holds on a dense g delta intersection of countably many open sets is said to hold generically in algebraic geometry, one says that a property of points on an algebraic variety that holds on a dense Zariski open set is true generically, however, it is usually not said that a property which holds merely on a dense set which is not Zariski open is generic in this situation. In general, in a descriptive context, this phrase introduces a simple characterization of a broad class of objects, with an eye towards identifying a unifying principle. This term introduces an «elegant» description which holds for «arbitrary» objects. Exceptions to this description may be mentioned explicitly, as «pathological». Cases, Norbert Ocampo of the University of Basel once asked Grothendieck about something related to the Platonic solids. Grothendieck advised caution. The Platonic solids are so beautiful and so exceptional, he said, that one cannot assume such exceptional beauty will hold in more general situations. Left hand side, right hand side, LHS, RHS. Most often, these refer simply to the left hand or the right hand side of an equation, for example, x equals y plus 1 display style x equals y plus 1 has x on the LHS and y plus 1 on the RHS. Occasionally, these are used in the sense of L value and R value, an RHS is primitive, and an LHS is derivative. Nice A mathematical object is colloquially called nice or sufficiently nice if it satisfies hypotheses or properties, sometimes unspecified or even unknown, that are especially desirable in a given context. It is an informal antonym for pathological. For example, one might conjecture that a differential operator ought to satisfy a certain boundedness condition for nice test functions, or one might state that some interesting topological invariant should be computable for nice spaces x. Onto a function which in mathematics is generally defined as mapping the elements of one set A to elements of another B is called a onto B instead of a to b only if it is surjective it may even be said that f is onto i e surjective not translatable without circumlocutants to languages other than english proper if for some notion of substructure objects are substructures of themselves that is the relationship is reflexive then the qualification proper requires the objects to be different for example, a proper subset of a set S is a subset of S that is different from S, and a proper divisor of a number n is a divisor of n that is different from n. This overloaded word is also non-jargon for a proper morphism. Regular A function is called regular if it satisfies satisfactory continuity and differentiability properties, which are often context-dependent. These properties might include possessing a specified number of derivatives, with the function and its derivatives exhibiting some nice property see nice above, such as holder continuity. Informally, this term is sometimes used synonymously with smooth, below. These imprecise uses of the word regular are not to be confused with the notion of a regular topological space, which is rigorously defined. Resp respectively a convention to shorten parallel expositions a resp b has some relationship to x resp y 
means that A has some relationship to X and also that B has the same relationship to Y. For example, squares resp, triangles have four sides resp, three sides, or compact resp. Lindelof spaces are ones where every open cover has a finite resp, countable open subcover. Sharp Often, a mathematical theorem will establish constraints on the behavior of some object, for example, a function will be shown to have an upper or lower bound. The constraint is sharp sometimes optimal if it cannot be made more restrictive without failing in some cases. For example, for arbitrary nonnegative real numbers x, the exponential function x, where e equals 2.718 gives an upper bound on the values of the quadratic function x2. This is not sharp, the gap between the functions is everywhere at least 1. Among the exponential functions of the form alpha x, setting alpha equals e to e. Topic 2.0870652 results in a sharp upper bound. The slightly smaller choice alpha 2 fails to produce an upper bound, since then alpha 3 equals 8 tight is often used with the same meaning. Smooth smoothness is a concept which mathematics has endowed with many meanings, from simple differentiability to infinite differentiability to analyticity, and still others which are more complicated. Each such usage attempts to invoke the physically intuitive notion of smoothness. Strong, stronger A theorem is said to be strong if it deduces restrictive results from general hypotheses. One celebrated example is Donaldson's theorem, which puts tight restraints on what would otherwise appear to be a large class of manifolds. This informal usage reflects the opinion of the mathematical community. Not only should such a theorem be strong in the descriptive sense below, but it should also be definitive in its area. A theorem, result, or condition is further called stronger than another one if a proof of the second can be easily obtained from the first but not conversely. An example is the sequence of theorems, Fermat's Little theorem, Euler's theorem, Lagrange's theorem, each of which is stronger than the last. Another is that a sharp upper bound C -sharp above is a stronger result than a non-sharp one. Finally, the adjective strong or the adverb strongly may be added to a mathematical notion to indicate a related stronger notion, for example, a strong antichain is an antichain satisfying certain additional conditions, and likewise a strongly regular graph is a regular graph meeting stronger conditions. When used in this way, the stronger notion such as strong antichain is a technical term with a precisely defined meaning. The nature of the extra conditions cannot be derived from the definition of the weaker notion such as antichain, sufficiently large, suitably small, sufficiently close in the context of limits. These terms refer to some unspecified, even unknown point at which a phenomenon prevails as the limit is approached. A statement such as that predicate P holds for sufficiently large values, can be expressed in more formal notation by x, y x, p y. See also eventually. Upstairs, downstairs a descriptive term referring to notation in which two objects are written one above the other, the upper one is upstairs and the lower, downstairs. For example, in a fiber bundle, the total space is often said to be upstairs, with the base space downstairs. In a fraction, the numerator is occasionally referred to as upstairs and the denominator downstairs, as in, bringing a term upstairs, up to, modulo, mod out by an extension to mathematical discourse of the notions of modular arithmetic. A statement is true up to a condition if the establishment of that condition is the only impediment to the truth of the statement. 
also used when working with members of equivalence classes, especially in category theory, where the equivalence relation is categorical isomorphism. For example, the tensor product in a weak monoidal category is associative and unital up to a natural isomorphism, vanish to assume the value zero. For example, the function sin x vanishes for those values of x that are integer multiples of pi. This can also apply to limits. See vanish at infinity. Weak weaker the converse of strong. Well defined accurately and precisely described or specified. For example, sometimes a definition relies on a choice of some object. The result of the definition must then be independent of this choice. Topic. Proof terminology The formal language of proof draws repeatedly from a small pool of ideas, many of which are invoked through various lexical shorthands in practice. A litter An obsolescent term which is used to announce to the reader an alternative method, or proof of a result. In a proof, it therefore flags a piece of reasoning that is superfluous from a logical point of view, but has some other interest. By way of contradiction, BWOC, or for, if not. The rhetorical prelude to a proof by contradiction, preceding the negation of the statement to be proved. Also, starting a proof or a sub-proof with assume indicates that a proof by contradiction will be employed if and only if iff an abbreviation for logical equivalence of statements in general in the context of proofs this phrase is often seen in induction arguments when passing from the base case to the induction step and similarly, in the definition of sequences whose first few terms are exhibited as examples of the formula giving every term of the sequence necessary and sufficient a minor variant on if and only if a is necessary sufficient for b means a if only if b. For example, for a field K to be algebraically closed it is necessary and sufficient that it have no finite field extensions means K is algebraically closed if and only if it has no finite extensions often used in lists as in the following conditions are necessary and sufficient for a field to be algebraically closed Need to show NTS, required to prove RTP, wish to show, want to show WTS. Proofs sometimes proceed by enumerating several conditions whose satisfaction will together imply the desired theorem, thus, one needs to show just these statements. One and only one. A statement of the uniqueness of an object, the object exists, and furthermore, no other such object exists. QED Quad erat demonstrandum, a Latin abbreviation, meaning, which was to be demonstrated, historically placed at the end of proofs, but less common currently, having been supplanted by the Halmos end of proof mark, a square sign. Sufficiently nice a condition on objects in the scope of the discussion, to be specified later, that will guarantee that some stated property holds for them. When working out a theorem, the use of this expression in the statement of the theorem indicates that the conditions involved may be not yet known to the speaker, and that the intent is to collect the conditions that will be found to be needed in order for the proof of the theorem to go through. The following are equivalent TFAE often several equivalent conditions especially for a definition such as normal subgroup are equally useful in practice one introduces a theorem stating an equivalence of more than two statements with TFAE transport of structure 
It is often the case that two objects are shown to be equivalent in some way, and that one of them is endowed with additional structure. Using the equivalence, we may define such a structure on the second object as well, via transport of structure. For example, any two vector spaces of the same dimension are isomorphic, if one of them is given an inner product and if we fix a particular isomorphism, then we may define an inner product on the other space by factoring through the isomorphism, let V be a finite dimensional vector space over K. Let a 1 i n be a basis for V. There is an isomorphism of the polynomial algebra K T i j 1 i j n onto the algebra S y m K V V asterisk. It extends to an isomorphism of K G l n to the localized algebra S y m K V V asterisk d, where d equals det a e j asterisk. We write K G l v for this last algebra. By transport of structure, we obtain a linear algebraic group G L v isomorphic to G L n without any loss of generality W L O G W O L O G W A L O G. We may assume W M A. Sometimes a proposition can be more easily proved with additional assumptions on the objects it concerns. If the proposition as stated follows from this modified one with a simple and minimal explanation for example, if the remaining special cases are identical but for notation, then the modified assumptions are introduced with this phrase and the altered proposition is proved. Topic. Proof techniques Mathematicians have several phrases to describe proofs or proof techniques. These are often used as hints for filling in tedious details. Angle chasing Used to describe a geometrical proof that involves finding relationships between the various angles in a diagram. Back of the envelope calculation an informal computation omitting much rigor without sacrificing correctness. Often this computation is proof of concept and treats only an accessible special case. Brute force Rather than finding underlying principles or patterns, this is a method where one would evaluate as many cases as needed to sufficiently prove or provide convincing evidence that the thing in question is true. Sometimes this involves evaluating every possible case. By example, a proof by example is an argument whereby a statement is not proved but instead illustrated by an example. If done well, the specific example would easily generalize to a general proof. By inspection, a rhetorical shortcut made by authors who invite the reader to verify, at a glance, the correctness of a proposed expression or deduction. If an expression can be evaluated by straightforward application of simple techniques and without recourse to extended calculation or general theory, then it can be evaluated by inspection. It is also applied to solving equations, for example to find roots of a quadratic equation by inspection is to «notice» them, or mentally check them. By inspection can play a kind of gestalt role, the answer or solution simply clicks into place. By intimidation Style of proof where claims believed by the author to be easily verifiable are labeled as obvious or trivial, which often results in the reader being confused. Clearly, can be easily shown. A term which shortcuts around calculation the mathematician perceives to be tedious or routine, accessible to any member of the audience with the necessary expertise in the field. Laplace used obvious French, evident. Complete intuition Commonly reserved for jokes puns on complete induction Diagram chasing 
Given a commutative diagram of objects and morphisms between them, if one wishes to prove some property of the morphisms such as injectivity which can be stated in terms of elements, then the proof can proceed by tracing the path of elements of various objects around the diagram as successive morphisms are applied to it. That is, one chases elements around the diagram, or does a diagram chase handwaving a non-technique of proof mostly employed in lectures, where formal argument is not strictly necessary. It proceeds by omission of details or even significant ingredients, and is merely a plausibility argument. In general, in a context not requiring rigor, this phrase often appears as a labor-saving device when the technical details of a complete argument would outweigh the conceptual benefits. The author gives a proof in a simple enough case that the computations are reasonable, and then indicates that, in general, the proof is similar. Index battle for proofs involving objects with multiple indices which can be solved by going to the bottom if anyone wishes to take up the effort. Similar to diagram chasing. Trivial Similar to clearly. A concept is trivial if it holds by definition, is immediate corollary to a known statement, or is a simple special case of a more general concept equals equals notes